Hey guys, what is up? It's Alex here with Alex Fire, and we are here on the next episode of Stanley Parables. It's actually been a long time since we've done any of the Stanley Parables, so it's actually uh, kind of need to go back. Uh, we were asked this time to uh, go down the stairs, so you'll see it's after the broom closet area. So, oh god. Okay, so it is still uh, not the right time on the clock. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't want to. I want to sit here and stare at the sign. It's got like blue. Okay, let's go. Uh, these files have been unfiled. Good. Wait, and this one's all green and wet. Why is there a ladder in... What were they doing to the ceiling? What were they trying to do? Something... Something not when good. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I guess I'll go in the door on the left. Hey, wait, didn't we just see the... We just saw the two green and blue ones earlier. And this one's all... Yellow. No, it's not. It's actually more blue. Because blue is the best. And this is yellow. <laughs> oh, my God. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Rip. Franz. What? What happened to Franz? Do not alert. Without consulting a whiteboard manager. Okay. What is this one to it? Not, not cost efficient. St uh, standard graphics. Oh my god. Uh, hire someone to... Oh my god. Papers are too... <laughs> fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper guy. Who moved the, my desk? <laughs> Please keep the targets on top of of blah blah blah. Alright. We got the slideshow still sliding. Oh, can I read that paper? I cannot. It is too... Okay. There's the broom closet. Just gonna open that up. These are the stairs we're talking about. Let's see if I can break this again. Coming to a staircase, uh, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Um, uh, um, uh, I broke the game. I can't, I can't do anything. Why was I go to the broom closet? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. All right. Can I, it just won't let me go back. I'm stuck in this area. I'm literally stuck with the broom closet. Come. Uh, really? Did I really actually stick myself and lock myself in this fucking room? Oh my god, guys. Now I actually have to revert back and I'll be back. Uh, give me a second. Okay, guys, I'm back and the door is now open. Uh, let's just not actually break it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley okay. walked upstairs to his boss's office. Or I don't. I <laughs> guess what's good. Oh my god, it's dark down here. Oh, it's a red light. Hey, there's boxes on the ground. I can't read what's on the ground, but okay. Fire hose. It's all the way down here. Oh, there's a car. I'm gonna drive it away. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And yeah, in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. What? And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. I'm not crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Why are we going in the... For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? 
Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? I didn't even notice and that. For that piece. matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty. They familiar. are fucking. They're the same. Repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming. Oh. Yeah, Yay, it's a dream. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Yay. He thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above what the ground. I, ca I can't control myself. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. I'm not and flying Stanley anymore. marveled that he had still not woken up. This is kind of creepy. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself oh. being considered by Stanley. Wait, wait a minute. Particularly strange. This is confusing. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Oh, God. And when he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Yes. Stanley <laughs> is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. But it doesn't seem like it. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... I can't move. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. I'm that actually... This was a dream. Like, the controls are, like, acting so up for me. his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Okay. Close over your eyes. On his skin. Let's wake up. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and I'm my a wife. job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. But I thought I got prostitutes now. My eyes. life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be. Yay, fine. I'm normal. I Wait. Am Boo, I'm normal. Okay. I'm okay. Good. I'm still here. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? I think I'm having an and aneurysm. Black. Oh, he definitely had an aneurysm. <laughs> my squeaky this chair. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Who's Mariella? Who the hell is this? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular That's day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. <laughs> this much she knew. Yeah, obviously. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real. Guess what, Mariella? What you're about to be. It you're about to be taken. To think this, <laughs> and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Oh my God! But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and, by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. 
So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Oh, yay. So I guess we died. Um. Is, uh. I guess we died. How many, how many endings have we done so far in which we died? I feel like it's a good bit, to be quite honest. But, yep, that was uh, this episode. And remember, if you want to see another uh, ending that I haven't done already, uh, leave a comment down. If I don't know the ending, so just tell me a path I can take. And uh, we will do that next time. I will see you guys later. Uh, bye!